check, check. Good. The Bible says that God is commanding all men everywhere to repent. He's commanding repentance to all men everywhere. Why? Because he's appointed a day when he's going to judge the world in righteousness. He's going to judge the world in righteousness by the man that he ordained, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. He ordained Jesus by, and he raised him from the dead. Amen. He raised Jesus Christ from the dead. God. Oh yeah, believe. Believe the gospel and be saved. The Bible says, He that believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, the same shall be saved. Oh yeah. For God so loved the world. You guys know the scripture, right? That He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. He that believes not is condemned already, but he that believes is not condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already. Why? Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Oh yeah, men love darkness, the Bible says, more than light. Men love darkness more than light because their deeds are evil. That's what the Bible teaches. Jesus teaches us that, that men love darkness more than light. It all started in the garden, in the garden of Eden. God created man, his own image and likeness. Amen. And he commanded man. He commanded man that he could eat. He commanded Adam that he could eat from all the trees that are in the garden. He could freely eat. But the tree that's in the midst of the garden, God said, thou shalt not eat of it. He said, in the day you eat of it, you will surely die. Amen. That was God's word. He said, the day that Adam would eat from that tree, that he would surely die. And then God made a help me for, for Adam. Caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. Pulled the rib. He made himself, God made him a help me. And Adam called her Eve. He called him, called her woman. She's the mother of all living. Amen. This is where it started in the beginning, Genesis. And then it says in Genesis 3 that the serpent was more subtle than any other beast of the field the Lord God made. And he said to the woman, did God say you can't eat from all the trees in the garden? And she said, we can't eat from the tree that's in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it. God said, only you will die. And the serpent said to the woman, you won't surely die. But God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you shall be as God's, knowing both good and evil. So she looked at the tree. The woman looked at the tree as one desirable to make her wise. It looked good to her eye, right? And I'll stop right there for a minute because the Bible teaches us, God's Word teaches us, that there's a way that seems right to a man but the end thereof are the ways of death. Amen, there's a way that seems right, Mardi Gras. There's a way that seems right to man, but the end of that way is death. It's the same way in the garden. When she looked at the tree, after God already commanded them, after God already commanded that they would die when they ate from it, she looked at the tree as one desirable to make her wise. And she looked at it and it was good. So she thought in her heart that it looked good and it seemed good for her to eat it. But it said in the end was death, was death. And that's what happened because God commanded that that would happen. 
and the day they ate of it, they would surely die. And that's what happened. The woman ate of it. She ate of the tree, and she gave it to her husband, and he ate of it also. And the Bible says the eyes of them both were open, and they knew they were naked, and they hid themselves amongst the trees of the garden. Why did they hide? Why did they hide from God? And they, it says in scripture that they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They heard God and they hid themselves. And then God said to Adam, he said, where are you? Adam said, I was naked and I hid myself. He said, did you eat for, he said, he, he said, who told you you were naked? No one told Adam he was naked. God didn't condemn Adam for being naked. Adam was already condemned because he didn't believe God's commandment. The same thing today. If you don't believe the commandment of Jesus Christ, that God sent his only son into the world to seek and save the lost, the same unbelief that Adam had in the garden that brought condemnation to his heart, that caused him to hide behind the tree, that caused him to cover up his nakedness and his sin. It's the same place you are today if you reject the only begotten Son of God. Then you're hiding in your sin. You're covering your nakedness. Oh, you may not have a fig leaf today. You may not have an apron that you've made of fig leaves, but you got something that you're covering your sin with. You got some way you're hiding your sin. You might be hiding your sin by lying. That's what we do, right? We lie to hide our sin. We cover up our nakedness with lies. Uh, the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Every man and woman. Because woman came from man. So if man's a liar, and woman came from man, and all women are liars too, along with all men. Oh yeah, yeah, because you want to cover your nakedness. You want to cover your sin. But Jesus Christ came in the world to save us from that penalty of death, from the death that passed upon all men. The Bible says that by one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. And so by the obedience of one man, the many shall be made righteous. The one man, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God manifested in flesh. The scripture says that Jesus was a man just like you and I. You know that, sir? Jesus was a man just like you and I. He was tempted in all points, just as we are tempted. But he was without sin. Jesus was tempted in all points, just as we are. But he was without sin. Amen. Jesus did not sin. But we all come from Adam. We have all sinned. We've all fallen short of God's glory. Oh, there's not a man on the earth that has, have you sinned? Have you not sinned? Oh, the scripture says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says that God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any righteous, to see if there were any good. And he says, God says there's none good, there's none righteous. They've all together become filthy. And there's none that seek after me, not one. You can find that in the Psalm, in the, in the 14th chapter of the book of Psalm. There's none good, he said. They've all together become filthy. You can't make it to God on your own. You gotta be made right. The way God ordained it, 
And the way he ordained it is through his son Jesus by raising him from the dead. Oh yeah, we have a resurrection coming. Don't you want to make the first resurrection of the dead? Oh, the first resurrection of the dead, the Bible says, the second death has no power over you. The second death, you know that you're going to die, every one of us are going to die. The Bible says, it's appointed once for man to die. And then judgment, wants to die. And then judgment, man. We're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to give an account. We're going to receive everything we've done good. And everything we've done bad in this body. You know, you're not going to escape judgment. You know that. It's appointed once to die. And then judgment. You need to read the Bible, sir. Read the Bible. Know the word of God, young man. You want wisdom? You want knowledge? You need wisdom. Oh, the Bible says, teach us to number our days that we may apply wisdom. Oh yeah, because our days are numbered. Maybe 70 years, and or not, maybe 80 years. That's it. All flesh is as grass. You ever watch the grass grow? You ever watch the grass get cut down in your mower? It's cast into the fire. And that's how flesh is. Flesh is like grass. It's grown up, it's cut down, and it's cast into the fire. The Bible says our life is but a vapor. Oh yeah. You're gonna breathe your last breath. We're all gonna breathe our last breath. Death is appointed to all men. Oh yeah. Adam's sin brought it in. Death passed upon all men, and for all have sinned. But you can escape the second death. You can escape God's wrath, and God's judgment. But you gotta flee. You gotta turn. We gotta turn from our ways. Because our ways are not God's ways. And His ways are past finding out. The Bible teaches us that the only way to the Father is through Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There's no other way to the Father, folks, only by Jesus Christ. There is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. This at the name of Jesus Christ. God gave this, God gave him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess. Amen. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. For the glory of God. Repent. Repent means to change your mind. Change your way of thinking. Commanded by God, because he's appointed a day when he's going to judge the world in righteousness, folks. He's going to judge the world. He's going to judge in righteousness, folks. This is why he's commanding repentance. The love of God. God's, God's words are love. God's commandments are love. God's commandments are life giving. That's what the scripture says. All the commandments of God. They're life giving, man. Oh, but most people. A lot of people, the Bible says that there'll be many on the broad way, the way that leads to destruction. You know, the party life. Oh yeah, being high and drunk, sleeping around, 
having sex out of marriage, all that kind of stuff, man. Adultery, fornication, homosexuality. All these things, they're lusts of the flesh. They're works of the flesh. Amen. And the Bible says those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You know that? If you're a Christian and you're saying that you're going to inherit God's kingdom, but you're practicing adultery, you're practicing fornication, drunkenness, you know, uh, lying, cheating. You know, if you're doing any of these things, the Bible clearly says you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And if you're a believer, it says such were some of you that you've been washed. Hey Amen. If you're not a believer, you need to repent. You believe the gospel, Jesus Christ, and be saved. You're on your way to destruction, you know that? That's why we're warning you out here. We're warning you to turn, to flee from God's wrath. The wrath of God is going to be poured out against all the children of disobedience, the children of the devil. Oh, but you say all people are children of God, right? You know, she say we're all children of God. Oh, yeah. You know, that's a lie. You know, the Bible doesn't teach that we're all children of God. It teaches that we're all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Without having faith in Christ Jesus, you're not a child of God. The only way to, be, to make it to the Father is through the Son, through His Son, Jesus. There's no other way to be a child of God unless you're born again. Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. A lot of people say, I don't see how a loving God can be so, allow all these bad things to happen to good people, right? But the first three words that come out of your mouth is, I don't see. You're admitting that you're not born again. The word clearly says you must be born again. Oh, you can't claim that you're Catholic without being born again. Or you're a Baptist. Or any other any other thing. Any like you're you're uh you know you can't claim, oh hey, you know I'm Italian. So I'm good. I'm good with God because I'm Italian. Or because I'm Jewish, then I'm good with God. No. Even the Jews. Jesus was Jesus was a Jew. And he told another Jew that he had to be born again. John chapter 3, go read it. You must be born again. He said that which gives birth to flesh is the flesh. But that which gives birth to the spirit is spirit. We must be born from above. We must be born of water and of the spirit. Amen. Yeah, that's what he said. It's a promise. We can inherit eternal life. Jesus said, this is the will of God, right? This is why Jesus was sent into the world. He said that you might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. John 17, 3. To know God, right? To know God. To know the love that God has, the forgiveness, the mercy. God is merciful. But there's also things that God hates. Did you know that God hates things? A lot of times we don't hear the things that God hates. But God, God hates a proud look. He hates a proud look. The Bible says that God hates a lying tongue. He hates hands that shed innocent blood. Think about that. Hands that shed innocent blood. How many abortions does this country have every day? Hands that shed innocent blood. God hates it, man. He hates all workers of iniquity. That's what he says in his word. He says he hates brothers that sow discord amongst one another. A man that sows discord against the brothers. That's what he hates. 
Well, you, you're disagreeing with the Word of God. You're not disagreeing with me. Well, you're disagreeing with God's Word because God's Word says that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Who's going to take care of him? Are you? Is God calling you to take care of him? No? Well, you know, here's the thing, right? God hates hands that shed innocent blood. But God, you know, the thing is, if, if you had an abortion already, you know, God can forgive you. Oh, I wasn't talking to you. I wasn't saying that you had an abortion. I was, I was speaking through the speaker. So it could be anybody. I said, if you've had an abortion, God can forgive you. God will forgive you. But you got to cry out for mercy. You got to realize what you did was murder. Are you okay with this Amen? guy? That's my brother. With this guy? That's my brother. You got to realize Fuck that. Fuck that guy. You got to realize that, you know? And he could, and he could save you from that sin, from that murder. He could save you from that. He really can. I, I, I've been, I've been delivered. I've been delivered from it. I've been saved from murder. He saved me. Amen. He's faithful. The blood of Jesus Christ. Well, you don't believe that. You don't have to cuss at me, sir. I mean, I'm trying to be nice to you, man. You don't got to cuss at me. That's hatred. That's hatred if you cuss at me. Why do you do that? It's not hatred. It's hatred to you because you hate the truth. You have not a love for the truth that you might be saved. No, because you're not rejecting my words. You're rejecting the word of the Bible, which is the word of God. Yeah, I know you are. That's why I'm, that's why I'm telling you this. So, but you got to have a love for the truth in order to be saved, man. And, and you say you don't. So I understand where you're at. You love darkness, right? That's what the Bible says about your heart. That's what Jesus says about the heart of man. It's deceitful and desperately wicked. If I what? No, see, the truth is, the truth is God's word. God's word is true. I heard you, you're a 17, you're a 17 year old mom and no one helps you take care of of, of your child, okay? We, we've all gone through different things in our life, right? We've all been through struggles in our life. Jesus said that, Jesus said that you're gonna have trouble in this world. He said you're gonna have tribulation, especially if you follow Christ, you're gonna have tribulation in this world. But he said to be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. But if you don't wanna hear the truth of the gospel, man, I can't help you. No. Why would you call me that? It's not very nice, man. It's not loving. How can I act like that? Doesn't even make any sense. How does that even act? There are plenty of 16-year-olds that have raised children. 15-year-olds. Yes, there are. You don't know that. You're making a big judgment call by saying that there's none. I would believe that there are some 16-year-olds that have raised their children, wouldn't you, sir? But that's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for your sin and that he was raised again the third day according to the scriptures? You don't believe that. No, you don't. So right now you're in a position where you can't be saved because you don't believe it. Well, you can keep saying that all you want, and that's fine. And I, you know, I still love you, and I'm still going to tell you the truth. You need to repent, man, because God. I I love that you say you never will, because that means you probably will. There's a good chance you might. There's a. I had the same heart. I had the same hard heart. I had the same hard heart that hated God and hated everybody that loved God. I was the same way, man. But God can, God can break that heart. I'm not gonna bless you, man. 
I'm not. I'll, sal I'll salute you. Okay? But here's the thing. You need to repent. You got to change your mind about God. You got to change. That's what repentance means, man. Change your mind. Change your mind. Turn away from... Turn away. I'm not going to stop the mic right now. We could talk later. You could talk with one of these brothers. I've got a brother behind you. He'd love to talk to you. Buck, another brother over there. He'd love to talk to you. I'm not going to bless you in what you're doing, okay? I bless you as a person. But not in your, not in your sin, man. You know? That's not very kind, man. You know a bunch of names, cuss me out. You know, the love of God can change your heart. That's what you need. You need prayer. You don't want you don't want prayer? Oh come on, man. You could be changed. You could be saved by the blood of Christ. He died for you. Have a love for the truth. That you might be saved, man. No man, don't hate me no more. You could get rid of the murder in your heart. Jesus could take the murder in your heart away. Hey man, he could take that murder out of your heart. That's what he's done. He's he's done he's done a miracle in our hearts. You know it's a miracle to even believe. To have the faith to believe. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hey Amen. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved he said with the heart confession is made unto salvation amen or I'm sorry with the heart man believes or with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and with the heart man believes unto righteousness this is what we're going to be judged in righteousness the righteousness of God. We're going to be judged according to Christ. That's why we got to listen to his words. We got to read his word. Become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus said to count the cost, though, if you're going to be a disciple, he told us to count the cost. He says, if any man comes to me and does not hate his mother, his father, his brother, his sister, yeah, even his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. He cannot follow me and be my disciple. Amen. That's what he said. Jesus, there's a tall order to be his disciple. We must lay down our life, man. We got to hate our life. We got to lose our life in order for our life to be saved in Christ. Jesus said, if any man seeks to save his own life, he's going to lose it. You want to read it? I'll show you. You don't want to know. You don't have a love for the truth. You just want to mock. You just want to act like you know what the Bible says. Or you want to say that the Bible doesn't say this or that. But the Bible actually says they had not a love for the truth that they might be saved. And God gave them over to a strong delusion that they would believe a lie. That's what he said. You want to believe a lie? You know, God will God will turn you over to a strong delusion. That you would actually believe a lie. Oh, the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. This is why we're out here telling you about the glorious gospel of Christ. He died. Who did Jesus die for? I have a question for somebody. I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. Who did Christ die for? What? Wait, 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 wait. What does the Bible say? No, 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 yeah. Jesus died for our sins so we can live again. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Christ died for the ungodly. The ungodly. He died for the ungodly. You hear that? The ungodly. The one who sinned. 
He died for the whoremonger. He died for the homo. That's who he died for. The adulterer, the fornicator. But not to remain in sin, young ladies. Jesus did not die on the cross for us to continue in sin. The Bible says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul said, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Amen. The Bible does say that we can be free from sin. Are you free from sin? Or are you still being controlled by the lust of your flesh? Are you still being swayed by your sin? The sin that's in your flesh? Oh, the sin that wants to cheat. The sin that wants to lie. Oh yeah, you're, the lust of the flesh. The Bible says, all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eye. And the pride of life. Think about that. The lust of the flesh. What is your flesh lust after? Women? Maybe the woman you're not supposed to be with? Maybe the man that you're not supposed to be with? You got tired of your one man, so now your flesh is lusting for another man. Right? That's fornication if you're married. Sex out of marriage. That's sex out of marriage. You know, if you're married and you're having sex outside of your marriage, or if you're not married and you're having sex outside of that of not being married, it's fornication. Oh yeah, and it's adultery. And adulterers God will judge. God's gonna judge the adulterers. Jesus said, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. He said it's more profitable for one member of your body to be cast into hell than your entire body. He said, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It's more profitable for one member of your body to be cast into hell than your entire hey, body. I, I might go Think about that. Right around the corner, Jesus says, if your eye is causing feet, you to sin, pluck it out. Up, so He's saying, if your hand is causing you to sin, that, cut it off. Come up and then... Because that hand or that eye that's causing minute. you to sin, uh, if you don't cut it off, it me. could take you to hell. It could take you to hell, people. We're gonna, we're gonna go with, uh, we're gonna move. Okay. Is that cool? I mean, I can go along. You can come with me. It's whatever you want to do. We can move. Is because I have the camera on? Well, I'm, I'm just saying there's a lot of people, so we could, I could go there, and then when they come up, they, you hit them from here. Is that a camera? What's that? Is that a camera? Oh, you're saying you got a camera. It's on? Okay. You want to stay with them, and uh, we're just going to be right there. Yeah, we'll be just, like I just want at least one well, camera on. Around the corner, getting them before they come in? Yeah, yeah. And then when they come up here, they'll... There's a lot of people leaving. I'm guessing they're going home. But... Yeah, just right around the corner. You guys want to preach too? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I got, I got this, so I figured. Okay. All right. Sounds good, man. I'll keep going as long as, as, long as the Lord leads. Yeah. That was good, though. You handled that. Those guys. There were so many people listening. Really? In the cars. There was a, a van earlier. With that guy and that woman. And they were stuck here. They had uh, no, on him. On him? Yeah. Just, you know, in case people come out, they're drunk. Oh, you know, we've had some people, a lot of people we've been talking to tonight. And we have signs, if you've been down on uh, Bourbon Street, we have signs that say, like, you know, homosexuals, drunkards, adulterers, fornicators, do not inherit the kingdom of God, right? And then I had a guy come up and say, man, how come, yeah, those homosexual, yeah, they're not going to carry out those homos, right? But this is the list. Everybody's drunk. That's Where do you want to go? Um, so you uh, at, you so we should stand here? Or? Okay. Or we can go to the middle. Whatever you, honestly, whatever you think. I'm following you, man. I'll follow you as you follow Christ. <laughs> Man, this really starts to get your shoulder out for a while. The strap. Yeah, just the bag. Yeah. What do you think, like, here? Or? Yeah. Uh, let's see.
good. Yeah, it's a good. That's a good. Uh, that's the um, Harbor Freight one. Let me stand on the other side of that, though, so my ears are on okay. Oh, okay. Because you got the veil. You got the veil over your face. 
And Jesus wants to remove it. Jesus wants to take that veil away, as you might understand. You might understand his ways. You might understand his love for you and, and dying for you. Doing a loving act and dying for you. But God is also, you know, he does not, he does not take pleasure in wickedness. And God is not like us. God is not carnally minded. To be carnally minded is, is, is death. We gotta be spiritually minded. We gotta be born again. We gotta be changed by Jesus. No, I'm interested. Gotta be changed by Jesus. No, I just wanna ask. How will the hell? I don't know how. I just want to Jesus. Jesus. What does is it mean to be spiritually Jesus changed in your continue. perspective? You're, uh, you're so we're you're born once. To to all of us were born you're once. Mm -hmm. And Jesus died for our sins. He died for our sins. And his sin is one and only son. He's only one son, so we will no longer be condemned, but yep. be saved. Yep. But then he, God says, do not judge. But then he says, after that, we have to have a spiritual birth. You're not going to receive anything from him. The only thing you can receive something from is Jesus himself. The Holy Spirit, man. He's got to be born again. Yeah, the Trinity. You're going to be Jesus will change you. Jesus will give you peace. Jesus will give you transformation in your life. Because he's the Prince of Peace. Because he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's, he's, a, he's a great God. He's a loving God. But God's also a gentleman. He's not going to force you. He's not going to force you to do what you don't want to do. You don't want to receive him. There'll come a point where God will allow you to keep up sin upon sin. The Bible says that if, if the word that was spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression receives a just recompense of reward, how shall you escape if you neglect so great a salvation? That was first spoken by Jesus and then confirmed by those who heard him. How are you going to escape if you neglect so great a salvation? How are you going to escape if you're like everybody else at Mardi Gras that walks by with bees? That wears bees and fornicates and is at, looking at girls' butt cheeks and then says, Yeah, I know him. I got Jesus. Not if, not if you're living in sin. Jesus says, You don't know me. And he's going to say to many people, Depart from me. I never knew you. You don't want to hear those words. You want to be received by Jesus. If people realize what hell is going to be like, they would, they would follow Jesus now. They would seek the living God today. They would seek Jesus today. They would seek God. Tomorrow is not promised. Who knows, who knows what could happen at Mardi Gras? A lot of violent, violent people. A lot of angry men and women. A lot of... People that get they get some uh, hey, alcohol hey. in them and they start they hey, start hey, into a, a lunatic, a madman, a, a monster because they love violence. They're not peaceable. They don't have self-control, self-will. Amen. They're loose. They're partying at night, looking all day, filling up their she's like Bob too. You know, filling up. Uh, Every sin in the book against themselves, but they're not, they're not willing, not willing to turn to God. They'll walk up and down Bourbon Street, but they won't lift a finger for Jesus. They won't go out and preach His Word. They won't live holy. They won't read a book of the Bible. They won't read any of the Bible. And that's the deception today. Everybody's good. Everybody's great. Everybody's going to heaven. Doesn't matter who you are. But Jesus said that the majority of people will be in hell. So when you look around at the world, if your life is lined up, if your life is lined up with everybody else, if you're doing the same things that the carnal people do at Mardi Gras, that's evidence that you are not right with God. And you're not ready to, to stand in judgment. You're not ready to stand before God. You know, you have no fear of the Lord. You fear death, but you don't fear God at all. Man, you're going to fear God. 
I'll see you later. Everybody knows about you. I don't know. 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 I
convicted about my own sins oh, yeah. even after becoming a believer uh, okay, okay. and making exception for sin yeah, yeah. I started receiving a chastisement of our father I see what you're saying. Yeah. and uh, for a whole year he disciplined me uh, very harshly at the time oh, yeah. uh, but I thanked him for it because by the end of that year I learned what true repentance was and I just yeah. cried out to him okay. broke okay. him and I asked him to forgive me and he did yeah, yeah. So the answer is scripture. It's the love of God that draws men to repentance. Well, there's scripture. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. And that word is agape love. We go by scripture, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. It's the goodness of God also. It's yeah, the goodness of God. It's agape love. Yeah, yeah. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. Yeah, yeah. Godly sorrow. Right. Not worldly sorrow. Right. Not worldly repentance. Right. right. That, that leads to death. That leads to this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I get it, man. I used to live this life. Me too, yeah. God took 30 years of addiction this fast. And it, what it was, it's godly repentance. That's it. That's it. Most churches don't teach God. But it was his love that drew oh, yeah. me in. Uh, it's amazing. Compare with anything. It's beautiful. There's God. Yeah. He's good. He's worthy. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, you can't fear people into heaven. The Catholic Church tried that for years. Oh, yeah. It doesn't work. Right. Yeah. There's God. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Keep going up, man. You're doing good. You too, bro. Yeah. God bless, man. We're doing the same thing. We just don't have signs. So <laughs> I got you. Yeah, yeah. We do it different ways, you know. Oh yeah. No, dude. God will will in your steps. He'll show you how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But you gotta preach the word, and God will confirm the word. Always. Very yeah. signs and wonders. God will confirm yeah. the word. He doesn't confirm your opinion. Of course. I just got back from Africa with thousands of Africans standing in front of me. I preached the word, God yeah. confirmed it. Yeah. People got set free. As long as came to Christ, it was beautiful. Glory to God. Yeah. That's you know, awesome. And I'm not boasting about that. I know. But I'm just using it as an example. I know. I appreciate it. I receive it. You're doing good, man. I receive it. Thank you. Can I pray with you? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Father God, right now, for my brother, I want to thank you for his faithfulness and for his obedience to you, Lord. And you will honor that. So right now, in the name of Jesus, he will see what you see. He will feel what you feel. You will speak to him. Words of knowledge, words of wisdom, and he will speak it in agape love, which is unconditional. It's not about feelings. And your love will draw them in with strings and cords of love. So I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, brother. I receive it. 100%. What's your name? Come here. Sterling. 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 Thank you, brother. Amen. Uh, so there's a when I when you prayed, uh, uh, what I saw was uh, purity, purity, purity. Uh, Lord's pleased with you. Thank you. He's very pleased with you. Uh -huh. All right, so just keep sharing what you're sharing. Keep sharing that wisdom uh, with Thank other you. Christians. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. 
Forgive him. Listen, that's for God to forgive him. How about you? Listen, that's for God to forgive him. You see what I'm saying? I got nothing to do with that. I'm just having this conversation. Yeah, you can't judge nobody. Like that. That's him yeah, it's like you calling me wrong for what I believe yeah, in. You can't judge nobody. But I ain't calling it's you crazy for you believing. That's what you believe in. It might be real. When you go to sleep, you might believe it at night. I don't know. You can't judge. It might work for you. It might work every time you do it. But it never worked for me. That ain't mine. That ain't mine. Stop spreading that, bro. That's bad, you, bro. But that's God bad, bro. You. You're trying to do God's business. That's wrong. Okay. You're wrong. If you're going to you. preach it, preach it. All right, man. Have, have a good night, man. Have a good night, man.
Oh, my God.